the start. So what we covered yesterday, we discussed about these terms, right? We discussed these terms and I said today we are going to start with virtual networking, right? Have you done any R&D or did you find any definitions from portals yesterday regarding the vSpace standard switch kernel port and port group and stuff? Hello. Hello. Yeah, Vivek. I'm, I'm just uh, checking with Vivek and Sunil. Yeah, Sunil. I got uh, some information about uh, Whisper switch. Okay. Yeah. It's a standard switch uh, that call uh, V switch, and uh, it is uh, inst install uh, when uh, we install ESXi. Okay. When you install ESXi, what will happen? Uh, automatically, we uh, that uh, Whisper switch uh, automatically install. Okay. Fine. Yeah. Let's see. Vivek, any, any inputs from you? Hello. You there? Hello. I guess he is not there. Okay, let's start. So let's take a scenario. Uh, remember the first class what we discussed? Okay, you have HP, DL380, Zen 10. Okay, so how many NIC cards you'll get when you, when you purchase by default? Let's say four NIC cards you'll get. You understand what I'm saying? Remember the first class. Yes, yes. Okay, so by default, you'll get a four. That's the standard nowadays. But you can request when you are placing the purchase order for any physical server, you can request a number of NIC cards how many NIC cards you require for your production environment. You have to decide and let them know so that they can add more NIC cards if you want. So by default, remember you'll get a four NIC cards and you can add up to 16 as well. If there, if this, if there is any business requirement, you want to utilize 16 NIC cards in your physical server, you can request the vendor to put 16 network interface cards so that you can utilize them in your virtual environment. So how to customize the, those 16 or how to customize these four, we'll see later on. First, let's understand you have four by default, right? So how they will be connected? Imagine you have two switches. In fact, three switches. Okay, so what I will do? These two are production switches. Okay, and this is what is this? Management. Let me switch. Okay, so you'll have a management port here, which you call it as ILO, right? You'll take one cable and you will connect here. And the second cable, remember, the second cable, you will leave open serial cable right and the third cable you take it and connect it to this switch and the fourth cable you 
connected to the switch. Switch one, switch two, and management switch. Now, this is this setup. Everything, every every component in this setup is one data center, right? The data center has firewall, right? So this will go to firewall. Imagine the simple setup. Everything will go to firewall. So from firewall, users will log via firewall. Users will log in. Right? This is brand new ESXi, brand new ESX. Sorry, brand new HP server, and you are trying to install it on. Uh, you are trying to install ESXi 6.7 on top of this brand new yes uh, physical hp dl380 server imagine you have only two hard drives only two hard drives 150 gb each ssd right so you configured both into a raid one and you, you created one logical drive one logical drive which is of 150 g One fifty GB. Okay, now from your laptop, you have a VPN client. VPN client, you connect it to this VPN, right? Firewall, you connect it to VPN. Now from your laptop. On your downloads folder, there is a 6.5 ESXi. You mounted, you mounted into ILO because I have, if you if you recollect the first class, I've explained how you can install the ESXi from ILO, right? You have a remote console and virtual disk. You can mount it and you can install it. Once it is installed on top of this, during the installation, if you observe, there are some steps where you simply press next, next, next. Okay, if you recollect, at initial stage when you are installing, it will show you press F11 to continue. Okay, then it is showing discovering devices. So what it will do, it will discover all the devices and it will found this 150 GB hard drive. And it will discover everything and it will found these two cables only. Serial cable can't be discovered management can't be discovered because these two are functioning from firmware not from the OS level okay so when it is discovering everything first it will discover this 150 GB hard drive and it will install just give me a moment just give me a moment I'm sorry, yeah, I'm back. So, first it will discover 150 GB hard drive and it will install it. Later on, it will discover these two network cards and it will give you a numbering saying 0 and 1. The numbering is something like VMNIC 0 and VMNIC 1. Remember, okay. So what happens? It will discover two NIC cards, and during the installation, during the installation, it will create one internal switch. Internal switch. You call it as VSPR standard switch. You call it as VSPR standard switch, and what will happen? It will connect to the first cable or whatever the discovered NIC cards are there. It will connect to the first NIC card and start communicating from outside world like this. Okay. Now, this will have two components. 
this will have two components one is vm kernel port another one is port groups okay remember one default switch will be created and it will start using the first cable and it has two components kernel port and port group remember i gave some ip address what kind of ip address 192.168.30.51 i gave this ip address so whatever the ip address that you assign to this host right this host that will be displayed under kernel port that will be displayed under kernel port as a same thing 192 168.30.51 this will be displayed under kernel port in short from your laptop or across the globe whoever is accessing okay if you are trying to access ESXi host ESXi host means outer box the physical box if you are trying to access the box then who will respond back kernel port will respond back to requester now imagine I have one virtual machine here on top of the ESXi can I create a VMs yes so I have three virtual machines here so Yesterday, remember the VLAN 1, VLAN 10, VLAN 20, VLAN 30, and so on, and so on, XYZ. Hello? Okay. So, these VLANs, whatever the VLANs that we discussed yesterday, where we will create, we create on this switch as well as on this switch. Right? So, these switches contain actual VLANs or VLAN properties. So, these properties will be utilized here under port group. So, for each VLAN, you need to create one dedicated port group here. Port group means logical mapping of your VLANs in physical switch. Okay. So, let's say, for example, this is VM which is running on VLAN 20. This VM which is running on VLAN 247. This VM I want to put it on VLAN 1. So what I will do, I will create three different port groups. I will mention VLAN IDs. VLAN IDs are actually created here. So here you will not do create or manage any VLANs or create or manage any IP ranges. Something called port groups you'll just create something called sorry something called port groups you'll create it here so this vm will go and connect here this vm will go and connect here and this vm will go and connect here means for example i have one more vm which is running on vlan one only this will come and connect to the same port group understood what i'm saying so port groups are logical mappings of your VLANs in the physical switch and if you are trying to access VM one Windows server is there you are trying to RDP it so this request RDP request will go to here like this via this cable once it reaches here kernel port won't respond so it will have another connection like this so port group will respond this is kernel port this is port group port group which port group rdp which vm this vm this vm has a vlan 10 vlan 10 has some dedicated ip range so this port group will route it to this via like like this and then you will get a response understood or any confusion or any questions up to this Hello. No. Vivek, you there? Hello. Uh, 
I don't know, man. He's not even responding. It's okay. It's a headphone problem. Maybe. Okay. So let me. Let me uh, show you the same thing. What I said, I have. I have this ESXi host and what is IP 151. Let me go to vCenter ESXi host one ESXi host. What is the IP? Ping. Sorry, NS. Ninety two one sixty eight thirty dot fifty one. So, what is this? This is the host name. So, if you look at this, is the first host zero one, right? So, I'll go to zero one and networks. We'll see one. VM network is by default it is created it's okay I'm not interested in this so let me go to configure configure virtual switches you'll see vSphere standard switch standard switch so normally in in older versions it, it will clearly written here vSphere standard switch okay and you see one kernel port one kernel port and it has the ip attached so connected to nick zero if you rec recollect the picture this is nick zero right vm nick zero and there is one default port group which has been created by default if you place any vm so let me explain this as well. So in this picture, if you look at, I have one ESXi host and it has one switch. Switch has two components. So the switch has two components. One is kernel port. Another one is port group. Both are connected to, sorry, both are connected to one cable called VM NIC zero, right? So this is by default configuration. This is by default configuration. So this is connected to one switch and there is another cable which is connected to another switch, second switch, right? Now, I said you have a VPN or firewall you placed and connected to VPN connected these two connected to VPN and you are coming in. Once you are coming in, the request will go here, go here, it will come here. If you are accessing a host, kernel port will respond. If you are accessing any VM, this port group will respond. Now the kernel port and port group, both the data is going on NIC zero. And NIC one is empty. We are not using it. If you want to, you can see the NIC one physical adapters. You'll see VM NIC zero, VM NIC one. VM NIC zero is used by switch zero. VM NIC one, no one is using, sitting ideal, right? So this this shouldn't be the case in real time. We don't use like this. And one more thing, I said by default one port group will be created by default go to switches one port group will be created with name vm network what is the name vm network so by default this vm network port group by default this vm network port group will support vlan 30 during the installation it has been set to the default vlan which we selected so the kernel port is running on vlan 30 right Kernel port is running on VLAN 30, 192.168.30.51 means VLAN 30. So by default, if I place any VM here, if I place any VM here, 
um, what kind of VM? Any VM. Let's put any VM. I'll say 192, 168, 30.200. If I give this IP, it will start functioning and you can access it from your laptop. This is VPN, remember. So let me show you this. For this, I need a storage. So quickly I'll create a data store, but I'll not explain any storage stuff. Okay, I'll not explain any storage stuff at the moment. I'll simply create, go to action. Options will move here and there. Storage, new data store. Next. Host 01 underscore local. So just remember like this. That's it. Because I need a data store, then only I can place the VM. So let me mount. I don't have the OVF file. So what I will do, go to Will not mount okay i know so 192.168.1.120 one my I don't know, username, password for my laptop because I used to log in with thumbprint or this pin number. Let's okay, leave it. What I will do, I'll go back. Let's downloads. So there's a, there's a file called tiny Linux. I need this one. So let me copy this over here. I need this file okay now go to first ESXi right click deploy OVF template from local file browse this one right tiny Linux next what is the VM name demo VM1 okay and now I'm creating it on ESXA host one fine. I'm not touching two and three. That will do it later on. Okay, now give me the details. Fine. Let's use this my storage and it will deploy it on this local data store I'll always select thin provisioning and you see by default it is asking on which network you want to deploy it is if I click on it there's nothing only VM network default one fine finish see VM1 has been created and is simply still it is refreshing yeah happen just a moment files Okay, let me try to deploy once again. 
we are still facing an issue we'll reboot and try okay next i'll use the information in vm network finish import ovf done i don't know for the first time why it is failed okay now you'll see you can power on the vm remote console i actually i want to log in with the remote console because it has some GUI problem. Let me try it out from here. 100% uh, sure it will not work here in my. System because. At the end it will look for DNS. Let's see. This is the problem because you will not be able to resolve the DNS fine I don't have any other alternative let me go with web console or else we'll try some other options later on always allow Web console. Okay, so it's working somehow. Control panel, network, and what kind of IP address we have to give? One ninety two one sixty eight. Let me come out and ping one ninety two. 168 30.200 I said it is not reachable right not reachable now inside I'll go inside again 30.200 and what is the gateway 30.1 is gateway and I'll say I'll put Google DNS and I'll apply come out and you see started pinging right if you want from inside go to control panel open terminal ping google.com see it is reaching google.com as well from my machine but if I change IP, if I change IP means let me reboot now again if you reboot it will lose the IP that's fine so see once once I reboot it you, it, you should get a timeout here see timeout 
So once I reboot, it will lose the IP. That's a different story because it is not the real virtual machine. I just want to check some network stuff. So control panel. Now I will not give any IP related to VLAN 30, 168, 20.200. And 20.1 is gateway, right? 4.4 and apply, you come out and try to ping it. Which IP I gave? 20.200. You will not be able to ping it because, because, see in this picture. So I have my base ESXi. What is my base ESXi IP? 192, 168, 30 dot. 51 right this is my base ESXi that means this cable will allow VLAN 30 okay and by default this port group by default this port group works for VLAN 30 only if you want to use additional VLANs you have to create manual port groups how many manual port groups that you have to create man if your company has 200 VLANs, so you need to create 200 different, 200 different v port groups in your VMware ESXi host so that it will work. Understood what I'm saying? Or still confused? Hello. We uh, create on firewall. Uh, we, don't, we don't create it on firewall. Okay. Yesterday in the physical switch, I logged into the physical switch and I have shown you VLAN 1, VLAN 2, VLAN 3, VLAN 10, 20, 30. Okay. Imagine your company has 200 such VLANs. Okay. There is no firewall, there is nothing. Don't go to uh, beyond the imagination because we are discussing only networking. I, I, I told uh, uh, firewall to uh, switch. Uh, no, not firewall to switch. From switch to your virtual switch. Okay. Now, do you think this configuration will survive? Now, what happened? You have one cable which is up and running. If something goes wrong, this cable is corrupted. What happens? Server is up and running and your host will disconnect from the network and all your VMs will be disconnected from network because you are all VMs, let's say you have multiple VMs here. Okay, these VMs connected to port groups. So everything will be communicated via this cable only. Okay, so if this cable is corrupted, your host is down, all your VMs also down. Then there is a single point of failure single point of failure means you just put 10 lakhs investment and server is up and running okay and 2 lakhs esxi license server is up and running and around another 2 lakhs windows license so total you spend 14 lakhs on this server okay to run some business now 20 rupees cable corrupted. Imagine 2 meters cable, which is around 20 or 200 rupees, let's say. Okay, not that cheap. 200 rupees cable. 200 rupees cable is corrupted. Now your whole business is down and your 15, 14 lakhs investment is in dilemma state for one hour or two hours. Do you think it is possible? Yes, it is possible if you don't plan it well, or if you don't plan it properly, I can say. Understood? Hello? Yes, yes. Okay. So, what I have to do, I need to do some modification in the configuration. What kind of modifications? Let's see. Sorry. Let 
struck. Let me reopen it. So, I said, I have a ESXi host, right? And I said, I have purchased with four cables no I said I have purchased with eight cables now can I purchase with eight cable or not yes. huh? I can request eight cables right when I purchase ESXi host so imagine I have Physically, physically, I'm talking about eight cables. One is ILO, right? Another one is one zero one zero one serial cable, which you will leave it here. Agree? Yes. Okay. So I still have how many cables for production? Six. Six means if I install ESXi, I will log in into the ESXi and check for cables. You will see VMNIC 0, VMNIC 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right or wrong? These two you will never see inside the ESXi or if you have a Windows Server, if you convert this into Windows Server, don't install ESXi, just install Windows. Even though you log into the Windows Server, you will see six cables. You will not see these two because these two are connected in firmware and they are managing via firmware only. Yes, yes. Agree on this? Yes. Okay. So, <clears throat> how to bring this configuration? I'll do some tweaking here. So, I'll go to my base ESXi server. Where is my ESXi01 and I'll go to edit settings. I'm building the lab. Okay, in real time, you have to purchase these cables. I'll add four more cables, four more cables. Okay, save it. Save it successfully. Now you go to your vCenter and ESXi, go to configure, go to configure, minimize the rest of the things which I don't require because I'm more concentrated on network switches. I have one standard switch. Okay, this is basic configuration and I have how many kernel ports? One kernel port to communicate. Go to physical adapters, refresh, how come how come these are not coming up you should see six here okay strange go to edit settings sometimes it requires reboot sometimes it will auto discover let me do one thing vm nick 3 net 3 what is this vm net 3 okay so let me do one thing i'll quickly restart okay we'll wait for some time i'll quickly restart so let it reboot i mean while we'll discuss something else so it's getting rebooted see if it is rebooting the virtual machine see it got disconnected okay so minimize and go to this picture 
now i'll do configuration in such a way okay so this is 0 1 2 3 4 5 these two are not visible okay so imagine i have switch 1 switch 2 another set of two switches switch 1 switch 2 okay i mean in short four switches are there physical switches i'm talking about so i will connect one cable here i will connect one cable here i'll connect one i'll connect another one here and this is also i'll connect here and i'll connect here possible and all the four switches on the back end anyway connected to some vpn possible okay now what is the default configuration boss you have a internal switch and two things kernel port and port group and both are connected like this so the data communication is something like this now i need to break this out how to break this out can i create a break this like this can i break sorry can i break like this i will dedicate the first default switch with kernel port and i will say please use these two cables and i want to create some additional switch here i can create a multiple switches okay and i will dedicate port group i will say these two cables okay now kernel port is responsible for what host traffic and port groups are responsible for virtual machine traffic okay so from my vpn i connected to my laptop from here now i have 192.168.30.51 also there is one vm or uh, two vms are there imagine two vms i create two port groups here okay one vm is connected to one port group another vm is connected to another port group so i assign two different ips 192.168.10.20.51 which is VLAN 10. Another 192.168.20.25, which is VLAN 20. Basically, my ESXA server is running on which VLAN boss? VLAN 30. But my VMs are running on VLAN 10 and 20 and so on and so on and so on. It's my wish how I want to configure based on my customer requirement I will customize this okay from my laptop if I log in to this or if I ping if I ping this so traffic will come via like this it will go to this switch via this switch it will go to kernel port and it will respond back no 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 okay this cable is corrupted still my traffic can go like this it can go via this switch via this cable kernel port right so at any point of time if this cable is gone i have this right or if the switch itself whole switch is gone no problem i have a new switch another standby switch if this port itself is gone no problem i have this port so at any point of time i have a redundancy what is mean by redundancy duplicate no you have a four wheeler okay on your backside dicky you'll have spare tire why you need a spare tire backup okay then why can't you maintain four because you have a four tires right running yes. okay so 
that's a different story. If you are maintaining four tax means shocking. Similarly, I need a redundancy. So if this is gone, at least this will help me. Right? So that my ESX server will not go down. Similarly, now from my laptop, I'm trying to access this VM. So traffic will go like this. It will go via this cable like this. One path. Another path is same traffic will go to second switch and via this cable. Sorry. Via this cable. Like this it will go. Right. And four and five leave it for now. I will show you when to use it. That is the reason why I have mentioned in a different color. So can I do, can I do, can we do this testing quickly in five minutes? Then we can stop here tomorrow. We can discuss more on this. Okay. So let me go to me center and first ESXi host. Now you will see after, after reboot. After reboot. Now Nick card showing. 0 to 5, 0 to 5, 6 NIC cards, but only one is using. The rest of the 4 or 5 are not used. So, how to customize? Just wait and watch. I said I have a default switch boss. Okay, in this default switch, kernel port and port group both are there. Sorry, boss, I don't want to use this configuration. I will simply remove this port group from here. Gone, port group is gone. Now only kernel port, but I need two cables boss. So if manage physical adapter and NIC one, NIC one select. Okay. Okay. Done. Okay. Updated switch. Now you will see VM NIC zero and NIC one for NIC zero and NIC one. If you select this. You select this, both are functioning. See, both are active only. Right, so kernel port now it can communicate via these two cables. You want me to test? Yes, we can test it. How to ping 192.168.30.51? It's pinging. Now, both the cables are up and running, right? Both the cables are up and running. I, what I will do, I'll come here. I will go to this edit settings. I'll simply select the first cable, connect, remove it. Still, see, first one is removed. One, one cable is gone. Still, your server is running, right? There is no ping loss. If the second cable is also gone, there is a, then there is a problem. You understood? Now, if you look at here, one cable is gone. Still, your server is responding via kernel port because another cable is there. You see, no ping loss, nothing. Okay, if I, if I remove the second cable, then there is a problem. Means you have a four wheeler, you are carrying with one Stephanie. If one tire is puncture, means one tire is having some issue. Okay, if it gets punctured, then you simply park it outside and replace the Stephanie and go on. No, no, no. If a two tires are puncture at the same time, means nothing will happen like that. Someone is doing intentionally, don't come out of the car. Right? Same thing here. If the two cables are gone at a time, that means someone is doing something intentionally inside the data center or somewhere. Now you see, ping is lost. Understood? Okay, so why you, why you need two cables? For redundancy purpose. Clear on this? 
yes, or sir. right. So now server is back online. This is for kernel port. Now, can I create a new switch? Yes, I can create a new switch. How? Add networking. For which purpose you are creating a new switch? You are you are creating for virtual machine port groups or for a kernel port? Kernel port is already there. I don't want to create a new kernel port. Okay, we will create a new kernel port whenever we require it. That is during the HADRS testing. For now, during the network testing, I don't require any additional kernel port. I require port group. Now select the virtual machine port group. Next. Now you have any switch or you want to create a new switch. No, I want to create a new switch because I don't have a switch. Only one switch is there which I allocated to kernel port. Now I need a new switch. Maximum transfer unit 1500 bytes and that's the default configuration. And how many NICs you require for this? This also required two NICs was so two and three. Two and three I've assigned to new switch. Next, what is the VLAN ID? VLAN 10. VLAN ID is 10. You have to type it manually. Okay. Port group, port group name. I'm giving port group name VLAN 10 and VLAN ID 10. Next, finish. So minimize this. If you expand the second switch, switch is created and it has port group with the VLAN ID 10 and you have two cables for this. Okay, can I add multiple port groups? Yes, you can add multiple port groups because company has 200 VLANs as I said. So for 200 VLANs, how many port groups we have to create? 200 port groups. So add one, add networking, virtual machine networking. Next, existing switch only. Yes, browse. Existing switch only this time. I don't create a new switch. Next. What you are doing? I want to create a new port group VLAN 20. Again, remove this, put VLAN 20 here. Next, finish. Now you have two different VLANs, two different port groups. Matching to your VLAN 10, VLAN 20. Okay, matching to your requirement. Can we deploy quickly two VMs and test it? Let me go to vCenter. The first one is no longer required. I'll delete from disk. Delete from disk. Now I want to deploy new virtual machine. Deploy. I said one VM. Okay. Next. I'll say web server next on es 6 i one validating okay next i'll put it on the same storage thin provisioning let's see if it works Next, and I'll, I'll put it on VLAN 10, not on VLAN 20. I'll put on VLAN 10. Web server is on VLAN 10, remember. Finish. Let's wait until this deployed. Strange. Let's see. So it's still deploying.
okay finally deployed man refresh so server is deployed on esxi host 1 and running on vlan 10 remember server is running on vlan 10 I want to deploy one more server. I can right click deploy OVF template or else what I will do. I have another option here. Right click on the VM, clone the VM, clone virtual machine. This option is available only in vCenter. Okay. So app, app server, app so application server. Now I'm cloning a new VM called application server. I'll put it on the same ESXi host same as original vm and yes customize hardware little bit virtual machine hardware let's see so everything is fine but i don't want to put this on vlan 10 i want to put this on vlan 20 right Application server is on VLAN 20, web server is on VLAN 10. Finish. Why I need a two different uh, machines in two different VLANs? Because web server we should talk to internet, application server should not talk to internet. Right? So, two VMs are up and running. Let me select app server web console. This is my application server. Right click. So control panel. What is the VLAN for app server? Hello? Twenty dot twenty five is the IP. That's it. I have applied. So now try to ping twenty dot twenty five. It's pinging, right? My twenty dot twenty five VM is working, which is on VLAN twenty. So let me go to web server web console what is the web server ip 10.25 okay so control panel network 192 168 20.26 i'll i'll give just just for uh, testing purpose Okay, now what you can do, ping 192.168.20.26. It will not work because web server, I put it on VLAN 10. Now I send IP VLAN 20. How it will work? It will not work. Either you change the IP or you change the VLAN in the backend. If I change the VLAN in the backend, simply right click, edit settings. Okay, just keep on watching this. It is not pinging, right? The moment I select this VLAN 20 and click OK. The moment I select this VLAN 20 and click OK and see, it should start pinging, right? Okay, but this is not the case. This is my web server boss. I want to put it on VLAN 10 only. So let's start pinging this. So I will change the VLAN again. I will change the VLAN again to 10 because web server and go to web server console. And come back. Oh, sorry, change this IP first 10.25 
and 10.1 is the gateway. And if you want to send the data to internet, give the internet a DNS. Okay, now you go to setup terminal ping. If you ping the google.com, it should ping. Ping google.com. See, it's pinging, right? From inside the server, you are able to reach google.com. And from outside, you can ping 10.25 as well. But for 10.20.25, from outside it is pinging. But from inside app server, if I ping google.com, it will not ping because I haven't assigned proper DNS. See, google.com, bad address, google.com, bad address. Understood? So far what we did, this we have tested. Okay, so the different switch is not there, but you have to imagine few things. But how I simulated, watch the video carefully. Once again, you will understand how the traffic is moving inside the virtual machine or inside the ESXi and how you can assign multiple switches, uh, multiple uh, standard switches and route the traffic and also how you will configure your ESXi or your ESXi virtualization environment with high availability in terms of network, network standpoint. Clear? Any questions? Hello? Any questions from anyone? Understood? Vivek, any questions? Okay. Fine. Let me stop the recording here. What we will do is we still have a lot of stuff to discuss in the networking part. In the standard network itself, I still need to do some of the testing scenarios that we will continue tomorrow. Okay. Let me stop here. Thank you.